Hey yo everybody, it's Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome back to another Baldur's Gate 3 build. Today we're gonna be covering something that we should play as our main character, which I call the Blade Dancer. This is gonna be one of the strongest characters that you can play with, both for combat and RP reasons. And I'm gonna give you some additional fun facts along the way. If you're looking for a character that's good in all proficiencies, that can win dialogue roles in almost every single situation, this video is the one for you. And not only are we going to be a master of the roles, the proficiencies, the RPs, but also a very strong combat character. So let's get into it. Bard and Rogue are the two strongest classes to pick as a main playable character for RP reasons. Rogue is the only starting class to gain proficiency in four skills of your choosing, which most characters get two and bard gets three so the rogue still has one up on the bard and rogue also comes paired with the ability to gain expertise to double the benefits of your proficiency in two of them therefore for me the rogue is a must pick starting class for a main character in Baldur's gate 3 because of those four proficiencies and those two expertise right at level one rogue also provides further benefits as you level such as the sneak attack cunning dash and as the subclasses offer the thief you get the extra bonus action which is very very powerful early game now when you pair it with the bard you gain plus one additional proficiency bringing your total to five now and once achieving level three on the bard you gain expertise in two more now you are an expert in four proficiencies that is massive for rp reasons Bard also offers the Jack of All Trades at level two, which adds half of your proficiency bonus rounded down to all other skills that you're not proficient in. This can sound rather confusing to understand, but the short way to explain it is that you gain plus one to all skills and plus two upon reaching level nine, thus increasing your roles in RP, dialogues, and other proficiencies by plus two across the board eventually. It's a nice little bonus, but not broken by any means whatsoever. Now, when you pair Rogue with the College of Swords Bard, this subclass really complements the Rogue and the Rogue's combat playstyle by adding additional flourishes, such as being able to attack two enemies at once, bolster the Rogue's lacking defenses with defensive flourish or mobile flourishes to close the distance on enemies. You also get the two weapon fighting style from this subclass, and it enables the Rogue's offhand bonus attack to do the same amount of damage as their main hand. And then when paired with the Rogue's subclass Thief, you get that extra bonus action, and now your bonus action's just as powerful as your main attack. And eventually, as you get the Bard's extra attack at level six, this class can effectively make four full damage attacks or two massive double swings using both action and bonus action every single turn. Grant them haste, and now they're attacking worth of six full attacks per turn, which is insane. For your extra attack, it's important to note that the Bard's extra attack comes at level six instead of the standard level five that most classes receive it at, which will slow down this class's ability to really pop off early on, and they're a little bit of a late bloomer. Now, some fun facts, as I was talking about RP and Rogue and Bard being really, really good for RP. <clears throat> if you want to go really crazy with proficiencies and make a true RP god who's good at so many different proficiencies <clears throat> if you just add in one level of ranger you'll get plus one proficiency of your choice proficiency in investigation with the bounty hunter and proficiency in sleight of hand with the urban tracker two choices that you get to make at level one on a ranger then you can also add in one level of knowledge of school cleric which gives you two more proficiencies to choose from being from the list of arcana history nature or religion. Between Rogue One, Bard One, Ranger One, and Cleric One, you will have proficiencies in 10 different skills for RP, and with the Rogue, expertise in two of those, 10, and then upon reaching level 3 Bard, another two expertise in two of them. That means you are expert in four proficiencies, and you have proficiency in 10. And with Jack of all trades, everything that you haven't picked eventually gets plus one and plus two to their roles. <laughs> and there you go, you have an RP god. Now, I think that's a little bit overkill between what you're gonna get with the rogue and the bard alone. And if you do add in ranger at some point, I think that's more than enough. 
So we're going to hop over to my Baldur's Gate 3 multi-class guide page. There'll be a link down to this in the description below, and you can take a look at this, and it also shows my other classes on different tabs, which we've covered in previous videos, as well as the future classes that will be coming up, such as the Divine Archer. This basically just breaks down everything that I just read out to you guys, and uh, this shows us our attribute allocation what stats we're going to want for this character, and then our leveling guide recommendations in terms of like breakpoints for the character. So you'll start the game as a rogue, you'll continue to level up as a rogue, because once you get the, I mean, right at level one, you're going to be doing more damage than most classes because you can utilize the sneak attack. One thing that some people don't know about sneak attack is you don't just have to have advantage. You don't just use sneak attack from stealth. You can, and that's a great way to open up combat because you'll surprise the enemies and effectively make them lose a turn and they'll have disadvantage on... Uh, uh, saving throws but if you have advantage say the enemy's knocked down prone or any of these advantage states such as sleeping entangled paralyzed blinded all that stuff you can still also use your sneak attack but the best part about sneak attack is in order to actually use it in a different turn that you're not stealthed in all you really need to do is have an ally next to the enemy so if you run in a tank any melee character up to that enemy the rogue can now come in and sneak attack on them Basically, sneak attack works in terms of double ganging, teaming up on an enemy. So you still always get value out of sneak attack every single turn, and it's going to do an additional 1 to 6 damage. And upon reaching level 2, you're going to be able to use your bonus action to dash. Dash normally uses a full action. Now you can use your bonus action to dash, allowing you to close the distance on enemies that are further, farther away. You can also use your bonus action to hide again if you want to ambush them yet again. But again, no need because you're always going to be able to use your sneak attack regardless of having to go invisible. But you can hide in order to give yourself a defensive edge uh, so that you don't get attacked on your turn. Level 3 is where we really start to see a breakpoint in this class because you can go assassin. And, you know, as long as you ambush them, so if the enemies are surprised, so you started the initiative on, on sneak attacking on them, caught them off guard, all of your attacks will crit. Uh, Assassin's pretty powerful, but it's only reliable when you get the jump on the enemies, and it's only good for the first round of combat. Whereas Thief, you get fast hands, giving you an extra action point. And because that extra action point can be used to use an offhand attack, or a dash, or a hide, we have so many uses on the rogue for an extra bonus action. And later on, when we get two fighting style from the bar, it's going to make it so that your your offhand attack does just as much damage as your main hand attack. Now it doesn't matter whether you use a green action point to attack or an orange action point because they're both going to do full damage. And that's where the bonus action grows and gets better even later on when you mix it with the bard. Or you can do a double swing attack which costs your main attack and your bonus action together, but since your offhand is hitting just as hard as your main, you're basically hitting two times for the cost of both of the points. So it still works out to be the same whether you do uh, an attack and then a bonus action or vice versa. Unless you're opening up with a sneak attack, which costs a main action, you can add in a bonus action offhand attack after. So we get a lot of value from the bonus action and the rogue at level three in the game is doing a lot of damage. Now, one thing that separates the rogue from the rest of the classes is they don't get the extra attack at level five, but their sneak attack continues to get stronger. And now they're doing three dice six. So the, the, the sneak attack progressively gets better and better and better, which makes up for the fact that they don't have an extra attack. However, when we mix it with the bard, we will get that extra attack. So again, just to show you guys here, uh, level one rogue, you're gonna start off with four proficiencies. You get to choose four of these, and then you get to be proficient in two of them. You get that expertise, which is really, really powerful as a starting class right here with the expertise. That makes rogue very, very powerful for a starting class at level one, and we're already adding in sneak attack. So level one, we're more proficient doing more damage, and then we progressively get stronger up to level three. But the fall off starts at level five when we don't get our extra attack and other classes do, regardless if sneak attack does extra damage. But when we mix it in with the bard, as mentioned, we're going to get some more proficiencies. And as we level up said bard, we'll get some spells. The spells are nice, but we don't really need to worry about them. I'll show you in game what spells that I use, but mainly the RP stuff. Casting Long Strider, it's a ritual spell, so it's free. Can give everybody an extra three meters of movement, everyone on your team. Super helpful. You get the feather fall. Some of these things are situational. They're good. Speak with animals if you want some more RP animal friendship. Friends, you, if you get friends, by the way, it'll give you an extra dice roll in conversation 
conversations and it just insta casts while you're in a conversation so that's always a good one to pick up so you're going to get some extra spells that are going to help you with the rp and whatever spell points you have like you're not going to be really casting a lot of spells because you want to use your action points to attack therefore you can cast heals and stuff in dire need in in like emergency situations but more importantly you could just blow off your spell points out of combat to top off characters that didn't get fully healed from a short rest now, one of the benefits to a rogue at level two is they get Song of Rest, which is a, basically a, a free short rest. Now you have three short rests instead of two between every long rest. That is massive. Really, really good for longevity. The Jack of all trades are already covered, basically plus one to everything you're not proficient in, and at level nine, plus two to everything. It's it's pretty good. Gives you some extra little bits of uh, points towards some of your proficiencies. Not bad. Now at level three is when you get the expertise in two of the skills that you're proficient in, just letting you master a few extra things. The important part is at level three, you get to choose your subclass. The College of Swords is insane when paired with the Rogue. The flourish where you get to attack two enemies with either a melee or a bow is just so powerful. You'll see in the footage that I'm using, I'm just cleaving, 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 cleaving. And what's so nice, the mobile flourish gets a value and the defensive flourish increases your armor class by four. That is massive absolutely massive i think on my current playthrough you'll see my character my armor class gets up to 28 on my rogue with the light armor that i'm using which is just ridiculous the two weapon fighting style that comes with the college of bard is really important because it it lets your offhand use the ability score modifier of your basically of your main attack what this means is your offhand or your bonus attack your bonus action is gonna now make it so your offhand does just as much damage as your main hand. And that's where the character really starts to come into play. You get all these extra action points from the thief, and then we can hit harder with them because of the rogue, because of the bard. And we can also use our main action to do things like AoE flourishes, slashing flourishes, more ball flourishes, and we're just getting a lot of value. Now at level five, we don't get our extra attack on the Bard like other classes do, but what we do get is the Bardic Inspiration charges go up to four, but you also get the Recharge Short Rest. That means every time you Short Rest, you get to recharge all of your Bardic Inspiration. So you could go in there, blow off four flourishes in a, in a, a round or two, and then the combat ends, you can Short Rest. And because you have three Short Rests now with a Bard on your team, you basically have 12 Bardic Inspiration per long rest, which is insanely valuable and allows you to just flourish, 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 flourish. And eventually when we hit level six on our bard, we get that extra attack finally, just a little bit late. And now we can really get a lot of value out of this character. So again, going to my breakdown, you're going to be playing Rogue to level three. And at level four, you're going to respec and go Rogue one, bard three. And the reason you're doing that is so that you get that bardic subclass and we keep the rogue one to maintain our four proficiencies our sneak attack but now we have the fighting style from the bard which is going to make our offhand do more damage we're going to basically increase our damage by going bard three rogue one while also getting the benefits of the expertise from the bard from there we're just going to be catching up our rogue at level five we go rogue two level six we go rogue three and now we're a thief and a bard three allowing us to have two bonus actions and a main attack action. So while our other classes are using their extra attack by now, at least at level six, we have our attack and two bonus actions. And that effectively means that because they're hitting at full damage that we also have an extra attack at that point. And level seven is when we truly get to kind of start building the class the way we want it. We're gonna go bard six right at level seven to get that extra attack, but we're gonna be reducing our rogue back to one, which means we still have our sneak attack. We lose that bonus action that we were enjoying but now we have an extra attack in its place so our main attack now attacks twice anyways so you win some you lose some uh, when you get your first feat at this point because your bard six and, and bard four would grant you your first feat i highly recommend the dual wielder it gives the much needed plus one armor class while dual wielding and it also allows uh, us to dual wield weapons that aren't light 
such as versatile based weaponry. Basically weapons that you could use, you could use with two hands, you can now use with one and you can have one of them in each hand. And that's gonna increase our damage output because those weapons typically do more damage. And from here, we're just filling out our rogue again. We're level eight, we're going back up to rogue two. We regain the, the lost cutting dash. Level three, we regain the bard. Level nine is where we truly become a blade dancer because we're gonna be our level six bard with our extra attack, all of our spells, our songs, our dances, if you will. And then we'll be back to a level three thief with that bonus action that we truly wanted. And this is where the character really starts coming into play. And you can see it from some of my footage. You just go crazy with the attacks. You have just tons and tons of bardic inspiration to throw out those flourishes. You have that bonus action point so that you can throw out some extra bonus attacks. What You could use it for utility. There's a lot of options you could do with that bonus action. And you have the extra attack. Give this character haste and it's doing all that even more. And from level 10 onward, you have a lot of flexibility. You could just keep adding more points into Rogue. Rogue 4 will give you an extra feat and you could go plus two dexterity and that'll give you a lot more like rolls and damage and defense and index and dexterous saving throws. So that's a really good option. Level 11, you can just keep adding more into Rogue because every time the rogue levels up, it increases the damage of your sneak attack. So your sneak attack's just gonna get really, really powerful. Now level 12, I'm a little bit back and forth on this. I like the idea of rogue six, bard six. That's just nice and clean, it's powerful. However, after doing the math, you slightly get more advantage by going Rogue 3, Bard 6, Ranger 3. So you're just basically removing a couple Rogue levels and replacing them with Ranger. And when you take the Ranger subclass Hunter, you get a lot more benefits here. Let me show you. So when we pick Ranger, we're going to be able to pick an extra proficiency in one of these areas, but we'll also be able to take the Bounty Hunter, which gives us proficiency in investigation, and we can also take the, the uh, Urban Tracker, which gives us proficiency in sleight of hand. Since you're already playing a rogue, you probably already had sleight of hand, so what you'll have to do is do a full respec, but when you're leveling up the rogue and you're leveling up the bard, you skip on sleight of hand, and then eventually when you add in the Ranger, you then get the sleight of hand from here. So you're going to have more proficiency efficiencies at this point in the game and with the rogue bard and ranger combined i think you get a total of eight which is pretty darn good and you'll have expertise in four of those now what's nice is at level two on the ranger because we already have the two weapon fighting style from the college of swords for the bard we can now take the defense option from the ranger and that'll just give us extra ac which is also another major benefit for going ranger instead of just adding more levels into row now we will lose a feat when we go this route. So you gotta weigh out the pros. Do you want an extra feat or do you want everything that a level three ranger has to offer? And what a ranger has to offer is their subclass. You can go Gloom Stalker, which is nice. You get an extra attack on the opening, on your opening turn in combat, but that's only once per combat. But because you do have sneak attacks and you can hit so many times on your rogue bard, it's not bad option. But what I particularly like is the hunter and you go Colossus Slayer. This ability allows the rangers to deal extra damage to targets who hit points are below the maximum value. Basically, any enemy that's been hit, you will do extra damage to them. And you're going to hit them multiple times on a rogue. You're going to open up with a sneak attack, then you're going to hit them with a, 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 a double swing, and then you'll probably have a bonus action left over to hit them with a offhand attack. And if you've given them haste, you're going to do it all over again. So at least one of your attacks is going to get a one to eight damage dice roll, which technically is more than the one to six that you would get from leveling up rogue. So this replaces the one to six that you would have gotten from a level five rogue, but it's doing one to eight instead once per turn, which sneak attack can only be used once per turn anyways. So it's slight, it's two extra damage more every single turn than going with a, a, the rogue, assuming that you're using your sneak attack. But we're getting that one extra armor class. We're getting proficiency in sleight of hand, investigation, and one of these of our choosing, animal handling, animal handling, athletics, insight, whatever we want. And if you really want to get crazy, you always have the option of taking heavy armor proficiency with the Ranger Knight, if for whatever reason you want to turn this character into a heavy armored fighter. But as mentioned, my character can use medium or light armor, and I generally have like 20 to 28 AC, 
without heavy armor. So I don't think it's necessary, And but heavy armor will give you a disadvantage to your sneak saving throws, making you not as proficient as sneaking. So I definitely don't recommend this. <clears throat> so weighing out the pros and cons here, do you want proficiency and three extra things plus an extra one AC from the defensive fighting style and the extra two damage that you would get from Colossus Slayer every single turn? Or do you want that feat from going rogue and get like plus two to dexterity? They both have different pros and cons. And if you really want to get crazy, you could just go Beastmaster and get a little pet. <laughs> that might be cool. Maybe you want to run around with a raven or a wolf or something. So, you know, they have their pros and cons. And I definitely recommend six rogue, six bard or three rogue, six bard, three ranger. But at this point, we're talking like level 12 right so it doesn't really matter up until this point you're basically playing rogue and bard and if you really want at the very end of the game just switch it up a little bit you can mix in ranger the important thing about this build is that you're going to have a lot of proficiencies and be doing a lot of damage as you can see from the footage in the background now jumping into game here you can see my blade dancer here she's looking pretty great i went with uh named her kerrigan the queen of blades uh pretty fun character there and uh i'll just go over some of my gear in case you're curious i like to use the the dual hand crossbows because if in the case that i need to use my bows uh i can't move or whatever something somebody's rooted me i could still use my bonus offhand attack as well as like the double attack and then because i'm a thief and i have two bonus actions i could do an additional offhand attack so you get a lot more value out of your off your bonus action when you're using two weapons and that goes the same for your dual wielding and as mentioned because we have the two weapon fighting style feet we could use these crazy weapons like this this is a long sword that's versatile normally if we look this can be wielded with two hands and we can actually wield it as our offhand even though it's like a versatile two-handed weapon these generally do a lot more damage right they do a ton of extra bonus damage so um, we have a lot more options with what we want to use and this armor you'll get in Act 2. All of these pieces of armor, you can type them into the wiki. You can figure out where I got them and how, you know, how I acquired them. But you can see I have 22 AC. I get, I think, a bonus AC if I'm in the shadows or obscured by something, which might be where I'm standing. And then if I pop the Shars Ag Aegis, this is once per long rest, but it lasts until a long rest, unless concentration is broken. And on the Bard, in terms of spells, we're not using any concentration spells. So from what I've noticed, she's so good at dodging and my ac's are at 24 and then when we use defensive flourish uh i could probably do it on this practice dummy over here just to show you if we use defensive flourish on this dummy our ac goes up to 27 and if i'm in the shadows it'll be 28 so our ac is insanely high this is higher than most tanks Th this character will dodge majority of every single attack that comes with them and i've hardly ever ever seen my concentration being broken on this shars aegis it's insanely powerful and this character currently is using medium armor but i'm using a medium armor that doesn't give me disadvantage on uh, stealth checks so generally i was always using light armor and you have to always check the armor if it will give you disadvantage on stealth checks whereas this armor does not so it's still a really powerful armor and i like it and uh, it's really great this cape gives you armor class plus one and this helmet gives you increased critical strike chance plus dexterity saving throws increasing your dodge um i really love the wondrous gloves i definitely check the wiki to see where i got these because they're ridiculously powerful Powerful. Your armor class is increased by one again. And if you have Bardic Inspiration, which we do, you get one more use of it. So I get, I think it's five Bardic Inspiration at this level per short rest. And because I can cast short rest whenever I want or once per long rest, and I have two short rests, uh, yeah, I have 15 Bardic Inspiration, which is 15 flourishes per long rest. And these just do remarkable amounts of damage. Uh, the the Line Breaker Boots, I like these because uh, basically I always dash. I dash every single turn almost to close the distance on enemies. And this gives you Wrath for two of those turns, two turns after using dash. And that's going to give you plus one damage with melee weapons. And that's plus one to both both of my way melee weapons. So it's basically plus two damage for the next two turns after I dash. 
Uh, when the wearer is healed, it adds one to six poison damage. I'm basically always coding my weapons with poison as a bonus action. And if I get healed, I'm adding one to six to that. So you're always wanting to use that bonus action to coat your weapons to increase your damage output potential. Uh, this ring gives you two extra acid damage to both my weapons, increasing my damage potential even more. And then this ring gives me plus one armor class while obscured, which is most of the time. So very good build here in terms of gear set. And this character has just proven to be absolutely uh, a demon slayer. Now, in terms of spells, you can see them here. I do cast heal seldomly once in a while because we can actually, you know, do some heals. I don't really use my action points for everything. So uh, upon a, a long rest, I will cast long strider on myself and all my allies. It costs no points to cast because it's a ritual. So, and it lasts until a long rest. So have a three meter extra movement on all of your characters until a long rest is just three extra meters always to move. Um, in, in the case that I need to jump down far, I can cast a feather fall, also a ritual, so it doesn't cost me anything. Um, speak with dead, also a ritual for RP reasons. I can cast this on myself and talk to the undead. Um, detect thoughts, also for RP reasons. I can cast this in the middle of a conversation. It'll just pop up as detect thoughts. It'll auto cast it. So also great for RP reasons. Speak with animals, it'll last until long rest so you could use that after every long rest it'll stay on you and see invisibility this will use a spell point because it's not a ritual spell but it will last until a long rest so i could cast this once on myself it does consume a level two spell slot but I have it until a long rest and it doesn't use any concentration or anything. So you'll never lose it. Now my rogue can not only stealth and be the master of the shadows, but nobody can get the upper hand on me because I can see them. Nobody can stealth on my rogue because the bard has the ability to see them. And that's why I call it the blade dancer. We're, uh, we're, we got all the songs of the bard, but we have the blades of the rogue. So it's a nice harmony between the two of them. Counter charms okay, we can throw that out, which gives us immunity to charm and frightened very useful in battle and then basically if i really really need to i, I can cleanse disease poison paralysis and blindness and also throw out some heals on my allies and because i mentioned you won't really use your spell points to do any damaging spells because you want to use your action point to proc extra attack and you uh, also want to put haste on this character and just focus on hitting 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 you don't want to waste a turn casting a spell unless you're in dire need of a heal you need to save somebody. So these spell points, I usually uh, use them to top someone off. Like if I do a short rest here and somebody's still wounded, I'll use my cure wounds to top them off. And then sometimes it's okay to be a backup healer in dire situations. So other than that, those spell points are really only used as a backup healer. That's it. Oh, I totally forgot to show off this weapon here, the uh, the Falar Louvre. I did show it off temporarily, but this is really, really good for the Bard because it gives you the plus one performance but it also has this really cool buff that you can use once per short rest, I believe it is. Yeah, it is. And oh man, I love using this. You probably saw it in some of the footage, but if you pop it, you can give you and all your allies around you a buff. And that's a 1d4 bonus on attack rolls and charisma, wisdom, and intelligence saving throws. It's massive. So you have this aura like a blade dancer should. <laughs> really powerful weapon. So from here, I just continue to make the get character better and better going into act three. But at this point, level nine, this character is completely busted and I'm having so much fun with it. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is my full breakdown of the Blade Dancer build. Let me know what you thought of this class down in the comments below. If you like my guides, check out my other videos. There'll be links to those down in the description below, a full playlist and all of that. And in the next one, we'll be covering my... Uh, uh, divine archer in the next video all right thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next video bye now